पाकिस्तान ने कहा है कि दहशत गर्दी और पुरतशद इंतहा पसंदी की जड़ों को हल करने में नाकामी ने दुनिया भर में तनाज़ात के फैलाव को जन्म दिया है और इस हवाले से बैन अवी हमत अमलियों को बड़ी हद तक नाकस गैर मुसर और गैर तसली बख्श करार दिया है गैर मुल्की कब्जे के नतज कहीं ज्यादा वाज नहीं है जितने के मकबूजा जम्मू व कश्मीर और फलस्तीन में है इसलिए इस काउंसिल की जिम्मेदारी है कि इसराइल की गजा में जारी नस्ल कशी की जंग को खत्म करे सफीर मुनीर अक्रम ने अकवाम मुतहदा की सलामती काउंसिल में आला सतही खिली बहस के दौरान ये बात कही सिक्योरिटी और बुनियादी जरूरियात और खदमात की फराहमी को तशद और दहशत गर्दी के खिलाफ कामयाबी के लिए जरूरी करार देते हुए सफीर मुनीर अक्रम ने एक जाम और मरबूत हमत अमली की जरूरत पर जोर दिया जो तनाज़ात की रोकथाम और हल के लिए कौमी कोशिशों को इलाकई और बैन अवी हमायत फराहम करे सेक्रेटरी जनरल के अमन के नए एजेंडे में बयान करदा कौमी सतह पर पुरतशद रोकथाम की हमत अमली के तस्वुर को कीमती करार देते हुए उन्होंने दहशत गर्दी के खिलाफ जंग में पाकिस्तान के तजर्बे पर रोशनी डाली उन्होंने कहा कि ई पाकिस्तान का दहशत गर्दी के खिलाफ जंग के लिए अपडेट शदा कौमी एक्शन प्लान जिसे ई अजम इस्तेकाम कहा जाता है मकामी कम्यूनिटीज़ के साथ मिलकर पुरतशद इंतहा पसंदी और दहशत गर्दी को खत्म करने पर मबनी है It's a pleasure to see you preside over the council. I extend my gratitude to Sierra Leone for convening this important and timely discussion. We extend a warm welcome to His Excellency Professor David Francis, Foreign Minister of Sierra Leone, for chairing this debate. We also thank the Assistant Secretary General for peace building support, the Commissioner for Political and Peace and Security, and other speakers. for the insightful interventions mr president it is said that all politics is local so is building and sustaining peace and security we value the concept of nationally led violence prevention strategies outlined in the secretary general's new agenda for peace the success stories of peace building and conflict prevention for example in sierra leone owed much to an enlightened approach to building trust and inclusion at the community and national level in pakistan's experience too fighting terrorism on our border regions was successful due to the support assistance and participation of local communities Pakistan's updated national action plan to combat terrorism which we call the Azme Istiqam or Resolve relies on working with local communities to exclude and eliminate violence and violent extremism and terrorism the provision of security and basic needs and services is essential to build social cohesion trust and success against the forces of violence crime and terrorism however mr president such national strategies for conflict prevention are necessary but not sufficient to address the complex crises which we face in africa and elsewhere the proliferation of most of these conflicts has been caused by both indigenous and exogenous factors that must be understood and addressed the root causes of these conflicts range from the legacies of colonialism internal struggles for scarce food water and pastures external competition for precious national resources efforts at regional or global hegemony and interventions designed to suppress the struggle of peoples to reclaim their own political and economic destinies the consequences of foreign occupation are nowhere as clear as in occupied jammu and kashmir and in palestine it is the clear responsibility of the security council to end israel's genocidal war in gaza mr president national strategies for conflict prevention 
can be successful, but only if these are accompanied by other regional and international measures to address some of the main causes of conflicts, poverty, unemployment, injustice, exploitation of national resources, external intervention. Unfortunately, international strategies to address these root causes of terrorism, violent extremism, and criminal activity have been either absent, inadequate, or proved counterproductive. For instance, the countries of the Sahel and other conflict zones require massive economic and financial support to overcome poverty and destitution, which is a cause of conflict. Yet, despite promises, international solidarity has been in short supply. This was vividly illustrated during the COVID pandemic. Most of the countries in conflict zones are also in dire debt distress. Yet, only four have succeeded in securing partial and not so very generous restructuring of their debts. On the contrary, when conflicts have erupted, the response has often been to impose sanctions, which mostly punish the poor and exacerbate the drivers of conflict. Or the response is to resort to some form of intervention, which is mostly counterproductive. Mr. President, what is required is a comprehensive and integrated strategy which offers regional and international support to national efforts for conflict prevention and dispute resolution. Such a strategy must include economic and financial support to the states in distress, to create employment and generate trust and hope, capacity building to enable governments to provide the basic services needed by local populations, an end to external exploitation, which fuels violence and terrorism, good faith efforts at resolution of conflicts at the local and regional levels, regional and international support for security and counterterrorism operations, and a review of ill-considered sanctions that mostly punish common people. Mr. President, we trust that this timely debate in the Council will inspire new thinking to build effective approaches to preventing conflicts, resolving disputes, and building peace in the numerous countries that are in conflict today. I thank you, Mr. President.